We finally made it to lesson eight, and now this entire lesson is going to be about decimals. So we have several videos about decimals. This is understanding them, and we're going to read and write them. This is 8a. So if you have missed or skipped any of the previous videos and become lost and confused, just click on the description for links to go back. A decimal number is another way to represent a fractional amount. And it's just a fraction that uses the place value system instead of numerators, denominators, and fraction bars. Our place value system is base 10. That means each place value represents a number from 0 to 9. And each place value becomes 10 times larger as we move to the left of the decimal point. And place values to the right of the decimal point represent values less than 1. Each place value becomes 10 times smaller as we move to the right. It is one-tenth smaller than the place value to its left. All right? I know this can be confusing, but stick with me and we'll figure this out. So take a look at this place value chart I've got right here. We've got our decimal point right in the center. And next to it, to the left, is the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, like we're used to. Okay? We've been dealing with these ever since we started the GED math playlist. Now we're going to be working on the right side of this decimal point. If you look, aside from the ones place, the decimal place values look like mirror images of the whole number place values. So not counting the ones place, we have tens, but then we have tenths. We have hundreds, and then we have hundredths. We have thousands, and there's thousandths, ten thousands, ten thousandths. See that? And it just continues on going back and forth. So here I've got it again, and we can add zeros to the right of a decimal number without even changing its value. If we have a decimal point and a seven, well, here's the decimal point, and the seven is in this place value. It's in the tenths place value. We could put a zero after it, and it's still seven tenths, but we would say seventy hundredths. And it's still equal to seven tenths. Now I know it's confusing, but by the time we're finished with this lesson eight, with all of the videos that are in lesson eight, and including lesson nine, I think there's about eight videos. By the time we're done with these eight videos, you'll understand this. Okay, so stick with me. We can even put two zeros after it. That's still seven tenths. We're just putting a couple of zeros after it. So that's seven hundred thousandths. But it's equivalent to seven tenths. Okay. We use zeros as placeholders when there's no unit for that place value. When we read and write decimal numbers, we use a THS at the end of the word. And we say or write AND for the decimal point. So here I've got a bar of 10, a long of 10 right here. And one of them is orange. So one out of the 10 is orange. So one tenth is orange. We can write it as point 0.1. We can even say 0 0.1. See? We can put a 0 there as a placeholder. It has no value. Right here, we have 5 orange ones out of the 10. So 5 out of 10 are orange. So 5 tenths are orange. It would be 0 0.5. See? We can even write 0 0.5, but it's half of the 10, isn't it? So 0 0.5 is equal to a half. 0.5 is half of one whole, okay? Now we have 100 squares, and 1 out of these 100 is orange. 1 one hundredth is orange. We write 0 0.01. Because there's no tenths, there's only 1 one hundredth, like this. We use a 0 as a placeholder to put the 1 into the hundredths place. Just like if we had... A 10, like a whole number, there's no 1s, but we put a 0 there so that we know that that 1 is in the 10s place. See? Or if we have a 100, we put a 0 in the 1s place, a 0 in the 10s place, so that we know there's a 1 in the 100s place. Well, it's the same thing with the decimals, except we're going in that direction. 
So if there's no tenths, we put a zero there to show that it's hundredths. See that? So you're going to be reading and writing decimals. There's a few rules to follow. You read as a whole number, but say the decimal place value at the end, the th word, okay? We put a hyphen between two-digit numbers like 32, 47, 56. There's a hyphen between those two-digit numbers. We also put a hyphen between ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, ten millionths, etc. Okay? So we're going to be putting a little hyphen. See? Tenths, hundreds, thousandths don't have a hyphen, but ten thousandths does and hundred thousandths does. There's only one word for millions, but then 10 millions and 100 millions gets a hyphen. 10 billions, 100 billions gets a hyphen. See? So if we had 2 and 5 tenths, that's this, 2 whole with 5 tenths, we'd write it as 2 and 5 tenths. And it's the same thing as if we wrote 2 and 5 tenths as a fraction. It's the same thing. This is the tenths place. It's right next to the decimal. This is the hundredths place that the five is in. We have one and, we read the decimal as an and, we have one and 75 hundredths. So because this is a two digit number, 75, we read it as 75. We put a hyphen in between the 70 and the five. And because the five is in the hundredths place, we read it as one and 75 hundredths. If it were a fraction, it would be 1 and 75 one-hundredths. See? We have 4 and 3 hundredths. There's no tenths. This is in the hundredths place. So this is 4 and 3 hundredths. So we have a whole number 4, and then we have 3 hundredths as a fraction. See? It would be written like that. This is 9 and 11 hundredths. This last digit to the right is in the hundredths place. So we read this as 11 hundredths. For a fraction, we'd write 9 and 11 over 100. It's 11 hundredths. See? Same thing, they're equivalent. This is just in decimal form with place values. This is in fractional form. Now check this out. We went from 9 and 11 hundredths to 9 and 11 thousandths. So now, because the far right number here, this 1, is in the thousandths place, we read it as an 11, but now we say thousandths. So this would be written as 9 and 11 over 1,000 as a fraction. See? This is 3 and 406 ten thousandths. We read it as 406, but then because the 6 is in the 10 thousandths place, we say 406 10 thousandths, okay? The only time we say and is for the decimal. So if this was a fraction, we would have 3 and 406 10 thousandths. See? That's how it would look in fractional form. All right, I'm going to keep going. You have to be careful when you say or write and, and I'm even guilty of saying it when I shouldn't. If you go back to some of my earlier videos, you'll say, see me saying 405, and I shouldn't. I should say 405, because that and really means a decimal point. So even I'm guilty of it, okay? So do your best to not say it or write it. Writing is way more important, because the and in writing definitely means a decimal point, and you could get confused, okay? And there's going to be questions like this on the GED math test. It's going to tell you to write that in word form, or it's going to give you word form and tell you to write it as a number, okay? Or to choose the right answer. We have 137 and, that's the decimal point, six tenths. Here we have 28 and nine thousandths. That's in the thousandths place. Now, I thought this would really be an important example. Here we have 600 and 6 thousandths. See that? It's like a mirror of each other, isn't it? The zero, the zero, the zero, the zero, and then the six at, on the outsides. 
but it's six hundred and the decimal point six thousandths because that six is in the thousandths place tens hundredths thousandths now look at the difference between this we went from six hundred and six thousandths to six hundred six thousandths and the difference between this number and this number is if you put an and in here that's the only difference that's why it's so important to not say and or write and when you shouldn't, okay? You could confuse somebody and they'll think you're talking about this number when you said this number as 606. See? It's 606 thousandths. Now take a look at this one. On the right side of the decimal point, we have a 5004, and we would read that as 5004 ten thousandths because that four is in the ten thousandths place so we have five and five thousand four ten thousandths so just read it as it would be without the decimal five thousand four and then say the decimal place value ten thousandths and there's no commas to the right of the decimal point it's not like the left side where we put commas every third digit for every period group of three there's no commas on that side, okay? I hope this made sense. Now, you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 105, okay? I hope you do well on it. And we can put a zero to the left of the decimal point when there's no whole number. So if we have a 0.25, we can write 0 0.25. That's like 25 cents, isn't it? All right, so if you see a zero in your book in front of that decimal point, you can write it or you can skip it and just write the decimal. doesn't matter. It's the same thing. All right. Our next video is going to be rounding, comparing, and ordering decimals, Lesson 8B. And if you need more help, these four videos are really, really helpful. Okay. And there'll be links to this actual GED Math playlist. All right. We just got into decimals, so I don't have any previous videos for decimals in this playlist. But there'll be a link to the actual playlist. Okay? All right. You can try writing the place values to help yourself. Maybe put some into your notes. You can freeze frame this right now, pause it, and then copy down those place values and keep it in your notes so that you've got it on hand. Okay? All right. So, good luck on the skill focus, and I'll see you at 8B. All right. I hope you have a great day. Bye.